Okay, so good morning and God bless the brothers and sisters in Christ and to one and all. This is Brother Darren, Hebrews 9 verse 27 and John 3 verse 16 YouTube ministry. So I'm making a statement this morning regarding the assault and the attack that happened in Leicester Square Thursday evening, just gone on Apologetics London, which consists of Brother Jono and Sister Amy. Now, the incident that, that happened, I'll just give it to you very briefly in a snapshot, was whereby a portrait vendor that was up at Leicester Square complained about the noise from Apologetics London and myself sort of preaching. Uh, John was on, on a microphone whilst up in Leicester Square. We weren't directly in the portrait vendor's space, but he made a noise, a clamour, a commotion. Um, some young Muslim girls got involved. They took up for his, his sort of case. We didn't have to move on. There was um, no reason or right for us to move on. We said we'll move on once we finished preaching. And um, these young Muslim uh, girls got involved in a, a backwards and forwards discussion that became heated with us. And eventually decided to try and attack Sister a Amy mainly um, for the equipment that she had on, on her or to assault her. But let's start at the beginning. So we've got up to Leicester Square. I'm walking up and down just outside the casinos, um, almost at the top part of, of Leicester Square, the, the part which is closest to Chinatown. I'm preaching the gospel, which is repentance, and also the kingdom of God unto salvation for whomsoever would believe. So I'm, I'm outside preaching. We were supposed to meet at 7.30. Uh, brother Jono and Amy and brother Nathan got down to the square They've set up a table when Jono has a mic and he's preaching. Anyway, uh, a portrait vendor that was drawing some sort of portraits that was there, he started complaining about us preaching the gospel and the noise of the microphone. Our response or rebuttal to him was that um, we had a right to be there just the same way that he did. We didn't have to move on from his from the space that we, we'd sort of set up in and that there was music either side of him that was loud as it was and why wasn't he protesting to those individuals essentially i just thought or felt it was a call just to try and stop us from preaching the gospel so near him maybe he didn't really want to hear it anyway um his commotion basically attracted some young muslim girls who were either going for a portrait uh, with him or had just come over to listen to his protest and they started sort of trying to rebuke us for preaching. So I ended up getting in a conversation firstly with one of the young Muslim girls. And I can't remember exactly how it went. It went backwards and forwards. I used some polemics as we were using polemics uh, whilst we were down in Leicester Square. Um, and I did mention to the young Muslim girl as well that um, yes, and it is true, truthful that uh, Muhammad, according to the Hadiths, um, did marry a six-year-old girl and consummated the marriage with her at nine. You know, is that something within her, within her religion that she finds right? Anyway, she got sort of um, upset about that. She's come closer to me. She's shouting in my face, don't insult my prophet, don't insult my prophet. But the fact of the matter was this, this is something that is written within the sources of Islam. I'm only quoting what is officially in, in, in the sources. Anyway, um, we had that backwards and forwards. I expected that to calm down, but it didn't. She kept coming closer to my face, shouting in my face and so on and so forth. And I said to her, well, you're saying not to be to, to be offended, but, you know, I feel offended by the fact that... Um, in the 8th century, Muslims invaded North Africa, even before the transatlantic slave trade, and they took Africans um, from the continent of, of Africa, from across North Africa, and later on in the East African trans saharan slave trade, 
they took them back to the Arabian Peninsula and they castrated them and put them into harems. This is just a critique on the position of, you know, your your religion. And in the end, I asked this young lady to answer the question as to whether she felt that was right and if that was fair as to what to ha as as to what happened to my African brethren. And she said in the end that she didn't care. She just didn't care. Anyway, that was sort of left alone. But later on, during the conversations that were going on backwards and forwards, these young ladies in particular, uh, they kept coming close to Amy and to, to John, shouting at them. And eventually there were a couple of attempts. The first attempt was to destroy or snatch the microphone away. And um, also to assault and attack Amy. Basically, some other young boys that were out in the, in the square at, at the same time, uh, they saw the commotion and they decided to kind of confront John. Um, some of it was for what John was preaching, possibly, or or but really they just wanted to target him. They they were taken up for these for these young girls. And one of the young guys stepped forward to John. And if you think this was simply just about um, a, a debate that got heated, uh, which has started off from this portrait vendor, it was more than that. Because this young one, this, this uh, one young guy, dark skinned guy, threatened to snatch John's chain, um, which was a, a small chain just with a little gold pendant on it. It isn't anything like you'd see some hip hop rapper wearing. Um, and this seemed to happen during a, a, a later attack on, on John that, that broke out. Anyway, in regards to the direct attack, um, one of the young girls rushed in to attack Amy. They'd already popped the microphone. The young guy had also told John to turn off the microphone. And um, this one other young girl, whilst John was sort of distracted, had rushed in to attack Amy. John had, had rushed over to defend Amy and then this one young guy has jumped all over John and started raining down punches on John and a few of his other friends tried to get kicks in. Some other people decided to intervene and eventually I managed to start to pull John up but somebody else did try to kick John in, in, in his head. Now regardless of, of what happened down there, uh, United Kingdom and Britain is a country with freedom of speech and things can happen and sometimes get get heated but there is no call within this country and within british laws for attacks and assaults on anybody as christians even if we do use polemics we would never think to use physical violence because that is what is actually commended in the bible in the new testament uh under jesus and under paul and the apostles we're told to love our enemies and that's exactly what we do. Now, if anybody thinks, well, okay, well, maybe you're using polemics. We have Muslims that we regularly engage with that tell us that Jesus um, was Satan, which, according to the Bible, is actually uh, an unforgivable sin and say all manner of deplorable and disgusting things. And, um, you know, things get said. And dialogue can be had, but at the end of the day, when you're prepared to walk away and not react in ways of violence, that should be recognised. But just to wrap up, that's exactly what happened whilst we were down at Leicester Square. I think the police have viewed the footage, and um, even though you can clearly see that these young Muslim girls and these guys are attacking... Um, you know, the police have obviously, I think from, from what I've read, they, they're deciding not to press charges. Obviously, as Christians, we have to be wise, um, but situations can happen and, and, and kind of get out of hand. But neither will we prepare to move for the sake of the gospel and to preach the gospel. And that is the truth of the matter. So I just wanted to give um, my version and also to give my love and support to uh, brother Nathan, brother Jono, and, and sister Amy. Um, yes, of course, we, you always need to try and be tactile about situations. Um, and people, you know, people say, well, should you use polemics? And, and should you be careful about it? Well, well, yes. Because if you think back to the abolition 
say for example of the slave trade or the, the reformation people had to show diagrams of ships with row upon row of hundreds of slaves that were chained together oh, sorry are not chained together but were in, in compart compartments that were no bigger than coffins people had to show the state of slaves being whipped and all the brutality that they were going through even for the civil rights people were hung and lynched right now god god says that we must forgive and we do forgive all but it sometimes when you're discussing things you have to discuss horrible histories and things that have happened that no one likes in order to understand the truth and for some people to come out of it obviously it's best if you can kind of qualify that within a conversation but um this is the truth of the matter if it wasn't for what was pressed home and shown in the slave trade or um if it wasn't for the indulgences that were talked about in in the roman catholic church and you know how people were made to pay out money for these indulgences in order to get out of purgatory and get to heaven where would we be now at the same time i preach love and repentance to all muslim hindu buddhist sikh whoever it may be we preach true sound doctrine for that which marries and aligns up to be sola scriptura and i pray people will adhere to that and find jesus christ as their true lord god and savior that's what i pray islam is ahistorical and unfactual when historians pretty much by consensus have deemed that jesus christ died on the cross where the quran states that it just made it was made to appear to look so and it has a history of violence against christians that's the truth even if it was young girls that incited these young guys to, to violence against us that doesn't mean that we don't love them or we will not preach for salvation or that we're thinking of any form of reprisals in, in fact far from it i pray that all come to christ and will know and love him like a savior as i did and i came from a bad start in streets you know being involved in activity with young youths that were just involved in street crime and i could change and i know that jesus christ died was buried and according to the scriptures rose on the third day for my sins and all who will come to him god bless you whether you're muslim hindu buddhist or sikh i pray you come to know and accept the lord jesus christ as your savior and violence is never the true sign of a true witness proselytization is supposed to show the actual kingdom of god and what god himself was like and that's why jesus said to love your enemies and even told peter to put away his sword i pray for muslims that they would understand the truth that is in jesus christ unto full repentance he died was buried and rose again he is god he is the son of god and islam coming up five or six hundred years later and effectively operating out of a sort of gnostic mind state or mindset to deny all of that that's false and we also pray for those that are continually being attacked and killed by islamic groups like boko haram iswap and others and also that doesn't mean that anywhere else in the world that if any form of christian is engaged in any violence that is right it's not but john 14 verse 6 jesus says i am the way the truth and the life and no no one come after the father but by me and john 1 verse 20 29 jesus says or john says about jesus behold the lamb of god who comes to take away the sins of the world if you don't know jesus christ as your lord and personal savior you need to think about getting to know him as your personal savior and that comes with accepting the fact that he is the son of god and god in human form and he died from our sins and as it says in acts that basically through through the name of jesus um is the only way for salvation and there's no other way you will be saved god bless this is brother darren Hebrews 9 verse 27 and John 3 verse 16 YouTube ministry.